little a and do you have an lp little a level over 30 milligrams per deciliter and that's what likely predicts your heart attack of the future lp little a Talk to your doctor. Um, they received your blood results and there are unfortunately some not very good news. You have uh, significantly higher risks for cardiovascular disease. And that's because one of my genes causes a biomarker called lipoprotein A, or short LP little a, to be much higher than average. And studies show... There's a, at least a 10 and maybe a 20% chance that your LP little a is elevated. You really need to demand that your physician checks this. So in this video, I'll walk you through what LP little a is, what its associated risks are, how to treat it, and what I'm going to do about it at my value. So let's get started. For those of you new to this channel, I have been quite busy over the last couple of months in designing, implementing, and following my own custom longevity protocol, all to age slower than Brian Johnson, in what I call the $10,000 blueprint challenge. If you want to learn more about my longevity protocol, then click the link in the pinned comment below or check out my channel. So what is lipoprotein A? LP little a functions similar to LDL cholesterol, which often is called the bad cholesterol. Although I found out that there isn't really such a thing as bad cholesterol, it's all about the transport vehicle. And LP little a transports cholesterol throughout the body, but it's much stickier and prone to causing trouble. So let's look at the bad, the ugly, and the good. Or was it uh, the other way around? So LP little a not only increases inflammation and plug in your arteries, but also makes it harder for your body to dissolve blood clots that can form over these plugs, which is particularly dangerous if you don't want to get a stroke or something like that. <laughs> Elevated LP little a levels dramatically increase your risk for atherosclerosis. To put that into context, if you're in the highest concentrations of LP little a, your risk of heart attack is increased three or four times fold. So you might wonder what are high concentrations? Let's break that down. If you are below 30 milligrams per deciliter, your risks are low. If you are between 30 to 50 milligrams per deciliter, your risks are elevated already. And if you're above 50 milligrams, then your risks are pretty high. In some countries such as my home country Germany, if you're above a level of 60 milligram per deciliter, you're even eligible to treatments like lipid apheresis, super complicated term, but what it basically means is they hook you up to a machine which takes out all your blood that filters all the LDL cholesterol and LP little a molecules or particles and then puts your blood back into your body. Pretty crazy, huh? Now, before I share my LP little a value shortly, let's dive into why so many people have elevated LP little a. The answer lies all in our genes. About 20% inherit the combination of genes that actually cause LP little a to be elevated. Interestingly, if this gene has been conserved to one out of five people, then this means it must have had some sort of advantage in the distant or near past. And this brings us to the good. I kill you! Such ingratitude after all the times I've saved your life. <laughs> There's actually a few studies that show advantages of elevated LP little a in wound healing or a reduced risk for bleeding, for example, in events like childbirth or extreme injuries. Also, on the opposite end, very low levels of LP little a have been linked to an increased all-cause mortality and cancer risk. So that suggests in a way that there's an optimal level for LP little a above zero. All right. Short break here because I want to try out something new for you guys. I want to talk about a little bit how this made me feel when I received this news. At first, I was literally a bit shocked because you don't expect someone telling you, hey, you have an increased risk of heart attack, but it makes sense. If I look at my family history, there's been a few incidences, not the least my grandma 
of stroke and she like never smoked in her life or yeah she had a pretty healthy life i would say um but ate a lot of saturated fat and see there she got a stroke like that and i'm actually quite happy to be able to know that right now while i'm still very young 33 and in this way i can actually start acting proactively against it and I would really call out to all of you to get this value LP little a measured for 30 to 50 bucks once in your life. This is definitely worth knowing because then you can take measures against it and enjoy your life better for longer. Okay, so what can we actually do to manage our high LP little a levels? Well, the bad news here is that there's actually very little we can do to decrease LP little a because it's genetic. So even lifestyle changes such an improved diet wouldn't help much in bringing that down. However, there's also good news here because there's quite a lot we can do to manage our overall risk for cardiovascular diseases. And for that, we would need to, for example, stop smoking, do sufficient exercise, have a great diet with especially little saturated fats, have a low and stable blood sugar, or, and we'll come to that in a second, take certain medications and supplements. But how would we measure success here? Well, it's basically all about keeping another biomarker called apolipoprotein B or APOB as low as possible. And by managing for low APOB, we actually decrease the chance that plaque builds up in our arteries in the first place. Now, if you're like me and are into the science behind it all, then let's take a closer look at cholesterol, lipid management, and APOB for a second. But if those terms bore the F out of you, then feel free to skip ahead. Okay, let me try to put this as simple as possible. The main risk to develop cardiovascular disease comes from atherosclerosis, which is, as previously mentioned, fatty plaque building up in your arteries that then clog them at one point. And this happens over many, many years. Now, all the lipids that actually cause this plaque to build up in your arteries are called atherogenic lipoprotein. And LP little a is one of them, but all the rest like LDL or triglycerides actually have one common denominator. And that's apolipoprotein B or APOB. Formerly practitioners would only really look at LDL, but now APOB is slowly but surely replacing it as the better measure to assess your cardiovascular disease risk. So with elevated LP little a, you want to keep APOB particularly low and general recommendations are below 50 milligrams per deciliter. But Peter Atia goes even so far to recommend- If you tell me you wanna to live to be 100, you're gonna to need to keep your APOB below 30 milligrams per deciliter. Let's take a look at medication and supplements now. Now there's many different supplements and meds in the market to actually decrease the amount of atherogenic lipoproteins in your bloodstream. Most common meds, for example, would be statins, but they have some downside risks as that they can increase your insulin resistance or might even increase your LP little a. Then there's PCSK9 inhibitors, which actually is one of the few drugs that can decrease your LP little a levels by about 30%, but they're very expensive and you have to get like a shot administered every two weeks. And then there's some other drugs that help you manage your uh, lipids better, such as Nostendi, which most likely I'm going to try out, but more on that in a little bit. On the supplement side, there is some evidence that there's a couple of substances that might help you lower APOB, and some even have anecdotal evidence to lower LPA. Those are berberine, red yeast rice, Q10 at 200 milligram, that's what Dr. Thale, my doctor, recommends, because he's seen in a couple of his patients that it actually can really help to bring down LP little a. Let's see. Lysine plus vitamin C or natokinase. Now, all those treatments are pretty much at the frontier of science, and I'd be very curious to hear from you guys if you had any experiences with supplements or meds to bring down LPA or APOB. Let me know in the comments below. So what's my plan? So basically my LP little a sits currently at 39 milligrams per deciliter and I would like to bring it down below 30, if that's even possible. On the other hand, my APOB sits somewhere around 53 milligrams per deciliter and I'd like to get it 
into the range between 20 to 30 that Peter Atia recommends. And for that, I'll be doing a couple of things. I'll cut down on saturated fats in my diet. I also will supplement with Q10 at 200 milligram and take natokinase, I'll still have to check out the dose, as well as I'll try out Nostendi as a medication. Then I'll reassess my blood values in a month and see if I need to take any other measures. Also at one point I'd like to scan for aortic stenosis, or basically to see if my arteries are clogged in any way already or calcified, through either a calcium scan, an echocardiogram or maybe a full body MRI, but right now I think it's too early and too expensive. As a final step, I try to optimize my cardiovascular health through exercise, in particularly cardio. And for that I look at one score very closely and that's my VO2 max. So if you're curious about how to improve it, then click this video here because I made a whole video series about it already. <laughs> you won't leave me here. Come back. Wait, Blondie. Listen, Blondie. Here comes the 